Hey everyone, welcome. This is a Fabric Espresso new episode for data engineers and data scientists. Today, together with Jenny, we are going to talk about a very important topic for every data engineer who is working with Apache Spark. Jenny, thanks for joining us another time. Hello, I'm Sarah. It's great to be here. Awesome. So let's just uh, kick off the discussion. We are going to talk about Fabric Apache Spark Diagnostic Emitter for Logs and Metrics. So topic important for every data engineer working with Apache Spark in the context of Microsoft Fabric. And for those who are more advanced, who wants to customize the experience, process more logs, emit logs, emit metrics and process them later on. So to kick off, Jenna, can you please start with the overview of what is this feature about? Why it's important? Yeah, sure, of course. Access to Spark logs and metrics has always been a highly requested feature over the past years. The new Fabric Spark Dialog Emitter enables users to collect Spark logs, Spark metrics, and Spark job events, and allow them to access the data in their preferred locations. Yeah, previously, users can only access Spark logs through the Fabric UI or the Spark server for individual Spark application. With this new feature, users can quickly query and access Spark logs and metrics programmatically, making it much easier to receive the data for any Spark application at any time. Additionally, they can also build their dashboard to visualize the Spark metrics and analyze logs on a broader scale, such as you can do it at the workspace level, capacity level, or the tenant level. This feature also allows the user to quickly spot any abnormalities and create alerting and notifications based on the logs, metrics, and the job events. That's awesome. So it sounds as a more advanced functionality for big organizations who want to control logs on the tenant capacity workspace level. So how this feature, so how the diagnostic emitter is integrated with existing monitoring tool? Yeah, yeah, great question. This diagnostic emitter feature is expanding and extending the current fabric monitor capabilities. It allows users to leverage the existing and powerful Azure monitoring tools to create their own customized notifications and build whatever the dashboard reporting they want. Yeah. And also by collecting those Azure servers with the fabric, users can capture logs and metrics from their Spark applications and analyze those data with their using the tools they're familiar with. This flexibility also enables users to choose the best approach they prefer for their specific monitor and the diagnostic needs. Got it. I'm just wondering, as in the context of Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, one service is super popular, Azure Log Analytics. So how monitoring fabrics and Spark monitoring works with Azure Log Analytics in more detail? Azure Log Analytics is a tool designed for analyze logs with a lot of powerful capabilities. So for our centers here, when users choose Azure Log Analytics as their monitoring destination, so all those Spark logs and metrics from the Spark application are sent to log a Log Analytics workspace. We emit all those data in a four primary tables with a predefined schema allowing users to easily query metrics such as CPU and memory utilization for any given moment for any Spark application. From there, users can leverage a powerful log analytics query capabilities to analyze the data, create their customized dashboard, even build their like a workbook set up any alerts. So this makes the user very easy to identify any issues and also monitor the application performance tracking the performance trending over time. And they can also like easily integrate the Fabric Spark monitor with some other systems that may also are interesting. That's awesome. So what I hear is that Fabric Apache Spark Diagnostic Emitter enables Apache Spark to send to emit logs and metrics to, for example, Azure Log Analytics, and then I can process it further. What about two more popular destinations? 
syncs uh, event hub and storage account. Is that right? Yes, yes. Yeah, event hub is another uh, place user can easily connect logs and metrics near real time. And also event hub is an event driven process and a streaming uh, analytics tool. So if the customer has some other third party tool like Splunk, Event Hub is the ideal option for the user to emit the data to the Event Hub and then collect those data with the third party tool like Splunk. Yeah, we have some customers use this option to route the fabric data and uh, we use either a preferred third party tool for like dashboarding analysis. For the other blob storage, on the other hand, it's very cost effective. If you want to keep the logs for longer period of time and even archive certain queries, you can also emit your data into the blob storage, which will be very like cost effective. You can also encode the data at any time you want, if anything goes wrong. Yeah. That makes sense. So centralized monitoring, real-time monitoring, and so the metrics and logs from Fabric, sending them to Event Hub or to Log Analytics or to Storage, Azure Storage. Now, I would love to see it, but before the demo, I believe that uh, you will show us that on the real case. But could you please share what is the process? How to do that? How to emit the, the logs, the jobs events, the metrics? Uh, how to get started? How to get, like, we know what's the benefit, but how to do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, the process to onboard is really straightforward. The first step is to configure the setup for logs and metrics in the Spark environment artifact. First one, you need to indicate what information you want to emit, such as Spark driver logs, execute logs, job events, or metrics. This is only one time configuration. Currently, the destination will support the Azure Event Hub, Azure Blob Storage, and the Log Analytics. In the future, we are going to expand more destinations. Once this is configured, the environment can be associated with a notebook or a workspace. Then it's very easy for you to reuse without you doing the configuration again. Once the step is complete, users can run their notebooks or their batch jobs as usual. If they want to emit any custom logs, they can use the Log4j appender to generate logs tailored to their specific business arguments. After the whole thing, all those like data, including customer logs, flows into the select destination in near real time, and the users can continuously get monitoring those data. Yeah, that's the process. That's the very good comprehensive uh, workflow. So a few steps to configure, but the gain, uh, like the value is clear. Based on your experience working with key customers for uh, using Microsoft Fabric, could you please share what are the key benefits of this end-to-end -end process coming directly from those customers? The feature we are delivering is, a, I would say, it's a common practice in the industry. So the key benefits, including streamlined data aggregation, near real-time visibility into Spark applications, and also the powerful programmatically current capabilities. With those features, user can quickly identify anything like abnormal, create any customer dashboard, receive alerts based on their logs, metrics, and job events. This flexibility also empowers the user to monitor and optimize the Spark workload at a macro like a scale effectively. Yeah, that's the key benefits. Awesome. So now this is the time for the demo. Let's jump right into to the demo part. This demo walks through the process of emitting Spark logs, job events, and metrics to your preferred locations, allowing you to aggregate and consume your data. First, I need to configure the setup for the logs and metrics destinations in the Spark environment artifact. The solution currently supports Event Hub, Azure Blob Storage, and Log Analytics. I can configure one or multiple destinations to store the logs and metrics. For each destination, I can specify what to emit. In this event hub example, I have indicated that I want to emit the Spark driver logs, executor logs, Spark job events, and metrics. I can then specify the endpoint and access credentials for the event hub. Similarly, I can do the same configurations for log analytics and Azure blob storage. Please note that this configuration is a one-time effort. 
I can then associate the environment with notebooks or workspaces. Now I can run my notebooks or spark batch jobs as I normally do. If I want to send over any custom logs, I can use the Log4j appender to emit custom Spark logs to meet my specific business needs. All the data flows into the destination in near real time. I can see the data flowing into Event Hub, the corresponding requests and messages, and I can also choose different time ranges to view the data. Here is a sample data set of the emitted Spark logs with a predefined schema based on customer needs. The solution associates the logs with the tenant ID, capacity ID, workspace ID, and artifact ID, making it easy to aggregate and report the data. The Livy ID or Spark application ID is the identifier for customers to locate a particular Spark application. For Azure Blob Storage, the data is stored by Spark application with the Livy ID used as the root folder. Within the root folder, the corresponding executor and driver data are saved in respective folders. By drilling into the driver folder, I can see all the Spark logs, job events, and metrics files saved there. I can download or export these logs for further queries and access. Lastly, for log analytics, all the data is emitted into three main tables with a predefined schema, allowing users to easily query the data. For instance, I can query the metrics table to understand my CPU and memory utilization for a particular Spark application at a given moment. Moreover, I can also do the last mile work to further ingest the data into Fabric Event House through the event stream. As you can see here, I can create an event stream, connect to the event hub, which I use to emit the Spark logs data as an external data source, and then add the event house as a destination for querying the Spark logs and metrics. After I set up the source and destination, I can view my Spark logs and metrics in near real time. For this example, I can see all the logs associated with the Fabric Livy ID, Spark application ID, executor information, and other Spark properties. The Data Insights tab also indicates my data ingestion flow volumes and locates the peak traffic hours. I can also go to the Event House System overview for data ingestion activities and use the Custo database to query the data. Here is the 100 record of the table. Well, this is the end-to-end -end flow for emitting and consuming Spark logs and metrics. Thank you for watching. Janet, thanks for doing the, the demo. It was super great to see that functionality in action. Now, just one short question. What's the release stage? Is that generally available feature or it's that in still public preview with a timeline for, for GA? And this feature has already been released for public preview. So please find our documentation and our blogs and try trying these features. And we'd love to hear your feedback. And one more thing to add on, as Sarah, and we, we are looking forward to customer feedbacks to enhance our features. So there are a few things in the roadmap about this feature. And we'll be looking at better UI experience for users to do the configurations. That will be the like, first thing we'll consider. And second, we'll potentially allow the user to indicate which customer log they want to emit or which customer log they do not want to emit. So that will give user flexibility to control the information they want to emit. And the third one, uh, we are also looking to like a better integration with the fabric monitoring capabilities, such as the fabric uh, event stream, fabric event house. That just gives the user more options in addition to leverage the power of Azure. We want also like uh, strengthen the near real-time monitoring within the fabric. So those are the items in our roadmap. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for joining us. And for those who are watching us, remember to again, leave the like button, subscribe the channel, leave a comment, suggest the topic for the next question, the next deep dive. And until the next time, happy enabling the, that functionality and meeting logs and meeting metrics and making sure that you control your job execution. Thanks a lot for, for watching us.